Wow. Hello, Boston. <laughs> that was such a nice um, video. Am I still it? <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> Así es. Thank you, uh, Miriam. Thank you so much for such a beautiful speech. And Courtney, I love you guys so much. How long have you been together? 20 years? <laughs> Miriam. Oh, 22. Okay, my girlfriend Jennifer Chris is here. Baby, we've been... <laughs> what they've done is such an accomplishment. We've been together for like 22 weeks? <laughs> now, that is an accomplishment. You know, it's such a um, pleasure for me to be here um, tonight because this is truly one of the places that I admire most in the world. You know, as you might know, I am from Venezuela, and um, growing up, we always looked at Boston at a place where things happen. You know, where people got the best education, where over and over history has been made. This is a place where communities have come together to create change. But not just change here, change that has had a ripple effect. A few months ago, as Miriam said, I was appointed a goodwill ambassador by the Organization of the American States in Washington. And one of the things that I have learned, thank you, um, while I've been, you know, while being there is the current LGBTQ situation in Latin America. For, for far too long, our community has been ostracized and discredited as a valuable members of society that have had and done and given important contributions. Karen Atala Rifo, a Chilean judge and mother of three daughters, separated from her husband in 2001 and originally reached a settlement in which she would retain custody of the, of the children. When Atala came out as a lesbian in 2002, her ex-husband sued her for custody. And the case was eventually heard by the Supreme Court of Chile. That court awarded the husband custody, saying that Atala's same-sex relationship put the development of her daughters at risk. Atala took the case to the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, and they, they ruled that the case was admissible to the court. This marked the first time the commission had taken an LGBTQ rights case. The court ruled that Atala had been discriminated against the custody. And in 2012, finally, the court awarded custody and damages. Thank you. Now imagine, she was 10 years without her daughters the most important formative years of their lives. Despite all these apparent advances in some countries, in my region, we still face unjust challenges. We continue to experience discrimination, such as physical and mental abuse, lack of legal recourse, lack of access to medical attention, lack of work, and homicide. In Brazil, hi to my Brazilian friends here, <laughs> a person is killed for their sexual orientation every 25 hours. In Mexico, they have had more than 1,000 homophobic homicides in just two decades. And the region has four of the five countries with the, fi with the highest rates of homophobic murders in the world. The reason why I wanted to tell you these statistics tonight is because everything you do here in Boston has a ripple effect. Then it's just really not about us only in the United States, but about all communities around the world that are following our steps. You know, when I wrote my book, I thought, as Miriam said, if I could help just one person, 
then that means that I have done the job. And not a day goes by where I don't receive a note of gratitude from someone, somewhere. So this is why I, I really want to, from the bottom of my heart, thanks to Miriam and Courtney, Michael has taken such a good care of us, and of course, the HRC for this award because it will allow me to continue spreading the message and standing up for our communities around the world. And I'm gonna ask you, just let's use this anger that we feel for our current politics to continue fighting for a truth. Sadness is passive. Now anger moves mountains. <laughs> we can move everything we want, but only if we continue to fight together for the right thing. And that is our community. You know, I have a 12-year-old girl. She's watching us live on Instagram. Hi there, Mama. <laughs> and I don't ever want for my daughter to feel like a Tala's daughters, where she could be told that my relationship with her could put her development at risk. <laughs> I want for her to grow up in a world that is equal. She doesn't know now because she's in LA, where we, like you here in Boston, we live in a bubble where everyone is so di diverse and where we have equality. I want her to feel that everywhere. You know, whether she lives in Salt Lake City or, or, or Mississippi or Chile. And I don't ever want her for one second to feel excluded like I did most of my life until I moved to the United States. We cannot feel complacent. And now more than ever, we have to continue to rise together and bring this equality to the rest of the world because we really need it. Thank you so much.